Hello and welcome to this Dawn Busters Taste Challenge, 614 a.m. Central Standard Time, January 21st, 2018. Okay. We have Early Times Kentucky Whiskey. Now, on Proof 66, they say it's a blended whiskey. Well, <clears throat> uh it's not american blended whiskey it's probably a blend of straight whiskeys okay it just says on the bottle bottle kentucky whiskey aged three years in used cooperage in other words it's aged 36 months in used barrels more than likely jack daniels barrels doesn't matter really uh the code on the back says Uh, a lot of numbers, and I'm not going to try to figure them out. Doesn't really matter. It's from uh, 2016. I know that. It says the 16 at the bottom of the bottle. Tinga Championship Sunday says, cheers, Tyler. The woman wagon. I am watching. The woman wagon. Oh, yeah. Staunch risk indicator says, good morning. Mapleberry Farm. Off grid. How Howdy. From Canada. Howdy, back to you, Staunch Risk. An online name off grid. Right, online off grid. Pop on, pop off, pop on, pop off. All right, clap on, clap off. Clap on, clap off, clap on, clap off. Early times introduced in 1860, one of the oldest whiskey brands in the United States, not sold as bourbon in America because it is not aged in new barrels. This is the only reason this is not a bourbon. It would be a bourbon, but they use used barrels. In other countries, it is sold as bourbon. Okay. Uh, these are sold around here for $8.99 per bottle. Club 400, introduced in 1951. It is a blended whiskey. It's 80% grain neutral spirits, or as they call it in Canada, grain whiskey odorless, tasteless, colorless, base, 20% straight whiskey age at least three years. Blended and bottled at Majestic Distilling in Maryland. Club 400 is a line of liquor. There is Club 400 gin. There may be Club 400 vodka. There's Clo Clo 100, Club 400 whiskey, and there may be a Club 400 bourbon. All right. <clears throat> This should be interesting because the Club 400 has a much higher rye note than you would expect for a blended whiskey. C400, okie doke. I have gotten it mixed up a few times, but not too much. I'm gonna save the bottom 25% of this bottle to do taste challenges against other blended whiskeys. Okay, so that's the last you're gonna see of Club 400 for a while. And then I'm going to start, I plan to start a taste challenge series with Redemption High Rye versus other bourbons. I think I'll go Redemption versus Early Times first. Because Early Times is, it is a bourbon in everything but name only. It's not a bourbon just because of one technical legal reason. And that's the barrels say, well, you're being legalistic. Well, yeah, well, when you're dealing with liquor, you have to be legalistic. Uh, there has to be some parameter, right? Okay, they're both golden, right? Okay, golden. This one has sediment, though. You can see that for sure, for sure. Early times has sediment. Okay, not a lot. It's a little hazier, though. And the redemption, <laughs> the redemption. <clears throat> the Club 400 is clearer. Both have nice legs, alcohol legs. All right, okay. Now, my neighbor across the street, she wanted to smell that up. Uh, 
Canadian Club whiskey that I bought, the six-year age. That's that's a review that's going to be posted soon. Six-year age. They, they no longer make the six-year age, to my knowledge. It's been dropped to five-year age the last four years, I think. But I got a bottle of the six-year age, and it is fantastic. And she smelled it, and then she tasted it. She said, oh, it tastes like whiskey. I hate whiskey. Uh -huh. You know, it should taste like whiskey. That's what it is. And she said, I got a bottle of vodka that's never been opened. I said, well, how old is it? Oh, it must be 20 years old. I said, oh, you want to see it? I said, okay. So she pulls it out the cabinet. Well, it's not vodka. I said, that's not vodka. It's gin. Gordon's London Dry Gin from England. Bottled in 1990. I said, 20 years. It's 28 years old. And then she said, what did they use gin for? And I said, well, she never lets you talk, you know. She says, well, oh, they use it to make vodka, right? I said, what? I said, don't, they don't use gin to make vodka. People make mixed drinks with it. Gin and tonic, for instance. Uh, I said, I always wanted to try Gordon's. And she laughed. Ha ha, she put it back in the cabinet. I'm sure they'll never drink it. I don't know what they're going to do with it. She's a beer drinker and a wine drinker. Liquor, no. And the bottle's in beautiful condition. You'd think it was brand new right from the store. I swear, brand new. But it's 28 years old. Incredible. Oh, well, I've had enough gin for my life, to tell you the truth. If I never had another gin, it'd be too soon. Not to say I don't like it. I do like it. But I don't love it. Plus, if I start sipping on gin, I start thinking crazy. Like, yeah, I'll show you. Well, you treated me. I'm gonna get you, and I start start thinking, no, that's not good. That's insidious. So gin is like an insidious product, and I've had other people tell me that. This Hispanic guy I work with from Nicaragua, he said, "Oh, I was telling him about somebody. I was telling him about somebody that started acting crazy drinking." He said, "That guy's Hispanic, huh?" I said, "What do you mean, Pablo?" I said, "What do you mean, Pablo?" He said, "Oh, you know, Hispanic people when they drink, they start acting crazy." I said, they do? Oh, yeah. Now, he's Hispanic, and he's telling me this. Now, you say, that's a stereotype. Yes, that's right. And Pablo from Nicaragua told me this. I'm not a gin guy, says Staunch Risk Indicated, SRI. It tastes like celery juice to me. <laughs> yeah, it's got those juniper berry and other botanical spices. It's a little different. It's a little different. All right. keep mixing them. I want to keep mixing these good. Early Times is a very old brand, like I said, and uh, there are some variants. You may see them. They have, I saw Early Times eggnog. Yep. There's like Early Time honey, Early Times apple spice, but they don't have it on the website. It's one of those hidden brands, you know, like a uh, Beam Suntory's like everybody else. They make all these brands that you'll see on the website. Plus, there's probably three times as many that you won't see. It's weird. But lately, I've been enjoying French 75s again. Gin with champagne. Uh, uh, no thanks. <laughs> no thanks. Okay, this smells very standard. Very standard. <laughs> Smells like sweet, woody whiskey. Like, for instance, smells like early times. <laughs> uh, this smells like, uh, oh, same thing, sweet, woody whiskey. But uh, maybe there's a little more rye note here. Yeah, it's funny. Like, uh, People are saying, ah, that blended whiskey is junk. It has no flavor, no taste, it's nothing. It's throwaway, it's uh, rot gut, it's trash, garbage, filth, atrocity of the world, etc. you know. But um, I have not noticed that. And I was doing the Canadian Club research yesterday. You know, I was on the Canadian website. It's different from the US website. It's like a totally different configuration. It's set up differently. It's the Commonwealth website because the one 
the one from uh, Canada is the same from Mexico, which I know is not Commonwealth, but uh, Australia, New Zealand, England. And then the America's website is different. The United States website is different. But the Canadian website, they go into a pretty detailed description of what corn whiskey is. And I said to myself, I knew it. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs> it's the same thing. I knew I was right. It's just a filler. You know, it's like a base. Oh, it's, they say right there in black and white, colorless, odorless, tasteless. They said the flavor comes from the barley and the rye. Now, nah, boom, boom. How you feel, boom. Where's the flavor coming from in the Club 400? Thank you. The barley and the rye whiskey, the straight whiskey. Okay, but anyway, you know, not, I'm not going to harp on that. I just, I'm just saying I knew I was right. And then they got the uh, scotch whiskey that's blended. It's the same principle. They use a base what they call corn whiskey. Okay. And then they add all the hundreds of other Scotch straight whiskeys in there and boom, 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 zippity, you know, zip, zippity doo dah. Then you got the blended Scotch. I would definitely toss away those honey variants. Oh uh, yeah. I tried the Jack Daniels honey when I was at the distillery and I thought to myself, yuck. <laughs> and then I drank the Jack Daniels cinnamon whatever that thing's called with the uh, red hots in it, I said, yuck. Now, I don't know why people would drink junk like that, but it's very popular. Oh man, do people buy that stuff? But to me, that's like flim flam. You say, now you're a counter argument as well. Don't you review those flavored beers? Uh, oh yeah, I review them. I just, I don't actually drink them, you know, on purpose. Tyler says he's, he agrees about the honey. You know what I'm saying? I can review, I review the flavored beers and they taste okay, but I don't actually buy them to drink. <laughs> you know what I mean? Look at my fridge. You're not going to see any of those things except maybe one can for a review. Okay, let's taste this thing. I didn't wake up till 345 this morning. Thank the Lord I have water again. The guy came and fixed it cost me 110 bucks. <laughs> I went to Ace Hardware to buy something else and there was so many people in there buying plumbing equipment. And I asked the checkout, the cashier, I used to be in my class. I can't remember his name in my high school class. I said, um, y'all sell on a lot of plumbing, huh? Huh? He said, you wouldn't imagine. Well, of course I imagine. Thousands and thousands of pipes burst down here. And uh, not just people's homes, but also government buildings. We have parishes here. We don't have counties. So parish buildings all over just. And people didn't know until uh, really until um, Wednesday afternoon when everything started to thaw. That's when the water starts spurting out everywhere. You know, before that, you figured it's probably broken because the line's frozen, you know, but you're hoping, you know. Oh, a very noticeable rye spice. You know, it's kind of like that black pepper spice that some people love and other people hate. Like rye bread. I know some people like myself that like rye bread. I know other people that say, oh, I hate that stuff. You know, so, I mean, you would hate it. You know, you would hate it if you hate rye, you know, you're not going to like it. You might think everybody loves bourbon. Guess what? Everybody doesn't. Some people can't stand it. Um, well, you know, because of that, that part of it, the charred wood and that heavy corn. I mean, it's corn. What I'm drinking here, both sides, is, is mainly corn. Yep. Maize corn, they distill it, they get liquor. Then they age it. After they age it, they get whiskey, you know, real whiskey, not just base whiskey, you know. Now, you're, uh, we're talking about the grain neutral spirits, you know what I mean? That used to be what bourbon was, uh, sort of like uh, when they used to ship it to New Orleans, they would ship it in the it would it was just shipped clear they didn't age it they would make it out there in kentucky and tennessee 
they, you know, distill it, take that clear liquid, ship it on down to New Orleans, and people would drink it just like that. It was probably 180 proof. Uh, but uh, of course, they cut some of it, made it lower proof, you know, probably 90 proof. But uh, it was just, it, it wasn't aged. But they noticed when it would be in those charred barrels that um, it would start to cure, you know what I mean? Cure is aging. When it was coming down the river, probably age a few months, maybe a month. But it was start getting a little brown tint. So they start calling it brown whiskey. And somehow it got the name bourbon whiskey, probably related to the bourbon, the French royal family, the House of Bourbon, who used to rule all of Louisiana, Tennessee, Kentucky, and then et cetera, all the way to the Appalachian Mountains. So and that's how it got popular and then it became a thing you know it's been a thing <laughs> since about the 1790s does not have to be made in kentucky it just has to be made in the united states of america Now you're saying you're talking, you're talking, get on with it. I know I'm, I'm having trouble distinguishing them. This one over here is very woody, very charred wood item component exemplification geometric algorithm. You know what I'm saying? Honestly, it tastes like a young Jack Daniels. You know what I mean? Like, a Jack Daniels that only aged three years, maybe in a used barrel. Ha ha ha. Could it be? It might be. It probably is. This one. Okay. It's a little cleaner, a little smoother, a little water. I can't say the word watery, but watery in the taste, like um, like less harsh, bold, etc. Just like a little, okay. A little rye spice. So, uh, like, I think it's got to be the Club 400 Special Reserve. That has got to be. They both have rye spice. So that's not the distinguishing um, feature. It's something about the boldness. Now, you know how, like, Jack Daniels would be kind of harsh. People say harsh. I, I know some people are like, oh, Jack, Jack Daniels, I mean, yeah. and then they corrected us on the tour. The guy jumped our case. Like, you're going to jump the customer's case. Hey, we don't say harsh. We say bold. And everybody on the tour is like, dang, this guy's militant. He said, I've been working at Jack Daniels since I was 18. That's good. I've been collecting comic books since I was 18. I haven't missed a month since May 20, 1986. Have not missed a month. Continuous collection. So you tell me about Jack Daniels and I'll tell you about uh, the X-Men and Phoenix and all of that. But yet my livelihood doesn't come from comic books. His livelihood comes from Jack Daniels. So I can see why he'd be more militant. I mean, me and you, we could argue about a crisis on infinite earths all day. It wouldn't really matter. It doesn't affect us. Okay, so uh, um, now which one's better? Better. Well, the one over here to my right, your left, maybe, but it, it's got a more pronounced flavor. Like it's stronger. It's bolder. It's got that kind of Lynchburg, Tennessee type thing going on and on and on until the break of dawn. You know what I would love to try, but I never will be able to. Back after Prohibition, they made a Jack Daniels whiskey called Topaz. I think it was called Topaz. It was like a straight corn whiskey, and it was only aged like two years because they, they didn't have, like a lot of it wasn't aging, you know. I bet that was interesting, but you know, it's the kind of thing it might still be made. It's like it might exist. You might go in a store and be like, 
And that happens to me. I go in these liquor stores and I just gasp. I was in Baton Rouge and I looked, I was looking around, yeah, 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 Seagram's Distillers Reserve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then I said, yeah, yeah, Jack Daniels. <gasps> and I saw something on the shelf and I, I um I got it together and I, I just bought it. <laughs> I bought it. I took it to my house and I'll show it to you in a little bit. Okay, but anyway, this has got to be, um, it's got to be early times. Sounds like a bold character. It is. It is a BC. It is a bold character, a BC. Okay, I'm going to call it. I think this is early times. I did it. I did it. I did it. I did it. And I did it based on flavor and aroma now. Early time, I don't know this, but early times has got to be, it's gotta be Jack Daniels aged for only three years and in used barrels, gotta be. I swear it's so similar, but it's so much cheaper. Now, what would I buy, Jack Daniels or early times? Well, uh, <clears throat> let's think about that for a minute. The early times is eight ninety nine. A same the a, the exact same size bottle of Jack Daniels would cost me twenty two ninety nine, maybe maybe twenty one ninety nine on a Walmart special. Uh, is Jack Daniels way better than early times? No. If it's even better, do you hear what I just said? If it's better, if it's better. Now, why do you think I would ever consider paying $21.99 for a whiskey that is at the best marginally better than early times for $8.99? Guess what? I would not. Never. Jack Daniels Honey and Crown Royal Vanilla is marketed for the people who can't handle whiskey the way it should be enjoyed. Straight up, not flavored. Up. Yuck. Travis Harper says. You are 100% right. Now, does that make them bad? Well, no, that's just what they want to drink. A lot of people in this world love the flim flam stuff. Not me. They probably got video channels dedicated just to flavored alcohol. I mean, look, <laughs> the Seagram's gin and juice. You go to the store and you see that stuff and you say, oh, Lord. People buy this stuff. It's like pre-mixed, you know. They call it RTDs. I don't know what RTD stands for, but it's like a pre-mixed liquor. They will buy that stuff. I would not buy that stuff. I'll drink Seagram's gin. You know, the Seagram's London distilled, London dry distilled gin from 1939. Yes. I'll really drink the Seagram's Distillers Reserve, which is I'll tell you right now, I'll put that up against any gin. And it's about fifteen dollars a bottle. That that thing, that Seagram's Distillers Reserve. That's the black and gold label. Man, that thing is brutal. That thing takes no prisoners. Ninety four proof. It used to be like a hundred proof, a hundred and four proof, but they lowered it. I think some people are getting pretty wrecked on it, so they lowered it down to ninety four. But it is major. That is a major deal. That's a major item. Distillers Reserve. Seagram's Distillers Reserve, that's no joke. That is no joke. And I'll put that up against any gin. But back to whiskey. Um, so I swear, you could tell. Just go back and watch the beginning of this. I knew what it was with the first aroma, with the first sniff. I said, oh, yeah. You just go watch it. Oh, ready to drink. Oh, gotcha. Thanks, Stephen Nix. I, I I could never figure that out. A thousand years I'd be trying to figure that out. It's like on Rock and Roll Club, my Facebook group, Rock and Roll Club. I always put F T L F M. F T L F M. People are like, what is F T L F M? And they'll ask me. I say it's first time listen for me. I don't want to keep writing that. Like people put all these songs I never heard before. And I got tired of writing it. First time listen for me. You know, so I just put F T. LFM. First time listening for me, you know, 
and I'm letting them know that I'm listening to the songs. I listen to everything they post, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and there's a lot of ugly. Because I've listened to every music post that's in there, every one, I've listened to them. Have I liked them all? Not exactly. <laughs> okay, so ready to drink, good. First sniff, I knew what it was. That's amazing, right? Tyler says, oh, first time listening for me or to me is for me. I was just wondering about that. Right. That's what it means. I even put that in the group description. First time listening for me, F-T-L-F-M. And today I posted a, a song from um, Presence, 19, uh, 1976, Led Zeppelin Presence. Because I bought that album and I, that came out in March 1976. So I posted the album cover and um, then I did the song, Nobody's Fault But Mine. And then later today I'll post a Candy Store Rock. And then a, and then on th later in the week I'll post a, a photo of In Through the Outdoor. I'm going to crawl. Tomorrow, oh, I'm glad you explained that. Oh, you're welcome. Tomorrow I've got an interesting Spencer Dryden Grace Slick photo, and then I've got uh, two songs from uh, Freedom at Point Zero. I've got uh, Jane live from New York City, 1981. It's a pretty good uh, clip. That's a major 1970s rock riff. Jane, you know, Jane, you're playing that game of hide and go seek, baby. But I play for keeps. That's a, that's an interesting song. I think David Freiberg. David Freiberg came up with that riff. He was born in like 1938. He's still touring, but uh, he came up with that classic riff. Uh, Jane, you play in that game. You play in that game. You play in that game. So I'm going to post that. And then I have another song. I think, what is it? Um, Awakening. I remember when that album came out because I was like at Sears. And Sears used to have a huge record department, like in 1979, 1980, that time period. You would go, like my parents always dragged me to Sears, you know, they want to go look at clothes. Well, when you're 11 years old, the last thing you want to do is look at clothes. You don't care, right? So it's like, oh, and then go buy shoes. But I would say, I'm going to go walk over here to the record department. It was just hundreds and hundreds of LPs, you know, and I would go look through all of that. It was like fascinating, you know, and then I remember I pull out that record cover with the, the kid with the little Weebelows outfit and he's throwing that spaceship. It's like he's throwing a kite, you know, like you fly a kite, but he's throwing a spaceship and he's on the deck of a ship, a Navy ship. It's a Coast Guard cutter, actually, but um, that was Freedom at Point Zero. I remember that album cover. It's so clearly. And I can remember being 11 years old thinking, I wonder what this sounds like. You know, I, I didn't know much about Jefferson Starship, but I knew a lot. But of course, people would talk about groups. I would always listen, always had my ear open for different rock groups. And I'd say, oh, okay. There was this guy, he was older than me, maybe three or four years older than me at the Methodist church. And he'd always want to talk to me about, he's like my mentor, you know. He's telling me, you know, uh, <laughs> you know, there's Jefferson Starship, but they used to be Jefferson Airplane. And I'm thinking, oh, okay. And then he's telling me they got Rush and they've got Mahogany Rush. I remember him telling me this like in 1977. There's Rush and there's Mahogany Rush. And that made an impression on me. I was like, oh, OK. And he says, they're both from Canada, too. Now, it's like he wants me to clearly understand this. And I was like, OK. All right. Well, anyway, so uh, this was no kind of challenge. Uh, honestly, this was no challenge. It was uh, discernible in the first sniff. So what's better, uh, early times or Club 400? Well, um, you can't really call a winner. You, you can't. Honestly, you can't say one's better than the other because uh, they just have different flavors. If you want something more floral, sweet, flowery, uh, cleaner, and fruity, let's say, then... Uh, then you'd go with early times. If you want something more woody, maybe a little bolder, let's call it charcoal, bourbon type, you know, but because that's what it is really. 
then you'll go with early times. They're the same price. They're going to be about $8.99 a bottle. You'll see early times anywhere you go. Club 400, the chances are you'll never see it. So you might say, what's the point of the challenge? Good, good question. But I do have some Maryland, Eastern Shore, Maryland, uh, Delaware, uh, Northern Virginia, Southern Pennsylvania viewers. So they probably get it. So JTLBZ says, how old are you? 49 years old, 49 years old. <laughs> Sorry. Every year I keep getting older. I can't help it. It just, it's a weird thing. You know, it just keeps happening. Um, there's certain record covers I just remember, like, and I remembered them years before I bought the album. You know what I mean? Like, like I said, Freedom at Point Zero. I remember that album and then I bought it, but I had just, I knew that album cover. I just it was so familiar with it. It's like the album cover, um, volume four, you know, with Ozzy Osbourne doing the two peace signs. We stand up with all the, the, what do you, whatever you call that jacket, that kind of Dakota Indian jacket. You know what I'm talking about? Like a sitting bull type thing. I had seen that my whole life. And then when I bought it in 1983, I was like, everybody knows this album cover. That's like everybody's seen it, you know, or um, obviously <laughs> Led Zeppelin four with the man with the wood on his back, the, the faggot. That's actually called a faggot, that uh, bundle of wood. It's an old, old English term. Uh, you don't look like it. Laugh out loud. Let me keep doing these taste challenges early in the morning. You're going to think I'm 69, right? <laughs> um, but it goes on and on. And it just you just know certain album covers. You just grew up seeing them all the time, like Blind Faith. You just always see that album. Same thing with that little spaceship. Something about the 70s. Everybody was looking at spaceships. You know what I mean? Although I think Blind Faith came out in 1969, but the same uh, concept. Uh what else? Um, oh, who's next? You know, with the uh, concrete pillars. I mean, everybody knew that album cover. You just knew it. It's just everybody knew it. You're just never going to forget. You always know what that is, you know. Or uh, maybe the most famous album cover of the whole 1970s, Fleetwood Mac's um, Rumors with Stevie Nicks in the ballerina outfit. You just never gonna forget that. You can't, it's impossible, you cannot forget that. Just iconic rock album cover. Oh, well, <laughs> we could get on to that. We don't wanna get on to that because then we'll get caught up in it, right? I could talk about that for 10 straight hours. All right, um, Club 400, not an iconic label, but you know, not a bad label. It looks kind of like uh, an informational uh, thing. A lot of writing on there, like a utilitarian label. Early times, yeah, they got a map of Kentucky. There's actually a map of Kentucky showing where the distillery is, and they got this seal for the, uh, it's not really wax, but you can get some of these like, this is the truth. Some of these like special edition versions that'll cost you $40 a bottle and it will have an actual wax seal, an actual literal, literal wax seal. Now I'm going to show you something that I told you I saw in Baton Rouge and it um, made me gasp. So hold on and then I'm going to shut this off and I'm going to start uploading another video. So hold on. Hold on. Hold on loosely. Don't let go. All right. Yeah, so like, uh, I'm always scouting, you know what I mean? Like I look around, I go to these stores that, and same thing with beer, like the more obscure and oddball it is, the more I got to buy it, like cowboy lager, you know, I got to buy it. So I'm in Baton Rouge on, on Louisiana Highway 30 southbound. This is like a questionable liquor store. 
Oh, well, you know, it's run by guys from, uh, you know, they're from Amman or the Baca Valley. <laughs> they got machine guns behind the county. If you try to rob it, they're coming out blasting. But uh, I'm over there and they have Kentucky gold, Kentucky blended whiskey. I'm like, oh, my word. It was what, $3.99? There was no way I was walking out that store without buying that. It was impossible. I had to buy it. <laughs> now you say, well, that looks like some kind of bum liquor. Yeah, well, even more of a reason to buy it. Because with, with me, the more inner city it is, the more attracted I am to it. You say, well, that's because your grandma used to live in the housing projects. It might be that reason. Oh, that was, yeah, that's right. She did. Then I saw this when I was in uh, Texas and I was like, or was I in Kentucky? Can't remember. Kessler. But we get that big bottles here. We do get this here. Actually, we get Kessler, but I had to buy it. Everybody says that's the best blended whiskey. Actually, I think it's the blended whis whiskey with the highest score. It's really famous. Kessler. It's been around for like 150 years. Smooth as silk. Jim Beam makes it. It's supposed to be famous, but I can't wait to try it. And then I was in Texas at Specs. Some of y'all know Specs. You know Specs. They're all over Texas. Famous liquor store. They have beautiful beer. Like you can get 10 50 for like cheap. No joke. Like a four pack of 10 50 for not a lot of money. And then they'll have like Pearl beer. You can't get Pearl beer anywhere. Pearl Light. I think the Pearl Light costs as much as the 10 50. I'm not kidding. It's like 99% worse. Royale Club. Oh, my word. <laughs> you can get big bottles of this, big glass bottles, Royale Club. It's like actually a literal, it's literally a brand. It's not some private label. This is an actual brand of liquor that's been around for like 125 years. I don't know. Hey, look, I didn't come out with it. Canadian Leaf. This is another one. Oak Park Distilling, Baltimore, Maryland. Yeah, right. Oak Park Distilling. Yeah. In other words, Majestic Distilling. They come up with all these little fake names. It's bottled in Maryland, but it's it's distilled in Canada. Like every Canadian whiskey. Isn't that weird? Every Canadian whiskey is bottled in America, in the United States, but it's distilled in Canada. Hey, look, I can't explain it. Canadian Leaf. Been around forever. It's even got a Canadian. It's really weird because it's got the Governor General of Canada's lion holding a leaf. And it's got the flag of Scotland, Ireland. There's a skull and cross. It's really weird. Okay, I can't wait to try it. Oh, well. Oh, well. Enough reminiscing and talking about different brands I can buy. <laughs> but you know, don't judge me because if you saw them, you'd buy them too, right? You know you'd buy it. You know you'd buy it. Risk. Staunch Risk Indicator says, where can Kessler be bought? Gas stations and everywhere here, says Tyler. Uh, in Louisiana, Kessler can be bought anywhere in Baton Rouge. It's a big time Baton Rouge brand. In New Orleans, I've only seen it at Dorgnacks. Mm, it might just be Dorgnacks. And then apparently there's a bar room. Apparently there's a bar room along US Highway 61 in the swamp. By uh, Blind River, there's a, I know that bar room, I've never been in there. What they call it, a Blind River Club. It's an actual club, but, it, but you can go in there if you want to. You don't have to be a club member. And apparently they serve Kessler at the bar. So how do I know that? Uh, well, if you get on the Beam Suntory website, there's a really interesting locator tool. And it'll let you pick any brand they make or that they list there. And it'll tell you if they have it in a bar room or a, a package store where you could take it. So it's quite useful. It's not particularly accurate, but it's useful. Uh, but I'm almost certain if I go to Blind River Club and I go in there, they're gonna have Kessler. Is anybody drinking it? Eh, there's probably some old 68 year old guy with a red nose who drinks it every night, you know, stumbles home and goes to bed and, and you see him out there fishing. <laughs> Oh, I say too much. All right. Thanks for watching this video production. Everybody, 
get ready because there's a beer review getting ready to be posted in about, let's say, two hours.